it was a textbook launch. As the GSLV rocket took off from the second launch pad at Sri Harikota at 4.56 p.m. on March 29, watchers on the rooftop gallery clapped. The ISRO immediately began releasing updates, even a video from the onboard camera, showing details of the flight that was carrying a communication satellite XOT 6A. The updates continued till April 1, when ISRO announced the successful second orbit raising operation, carried out on March 31. The next orbit raising was to happen shortly afterwards, which would insert the satellite into the orbit it was destined for. But, after the flurry of updates, an ominous silence followed. ISRO finally confirmed it lost communication with the satellite on April 1. The satellite was on the last leg of its journey when the communication snapped. ISRO has not lost all hope yet. Its chairman K. Sivan said efforts are still on to re-establish contact with the satellite. Realists know that while finding SOT 6A is not impossible, keeping the hope alive is a consolation. If it happens, it will be a wonder, said Deshavatanu Pillai, Honorary Distinguished Professor, ISRO. What is more important is to understand that such things happen in every space program, said Bilai. While it is not a happy event, it should not have any impact on the next planned missions. ISRO has a busy calendar this year. It is moving on to heavier launches, and we have got to move on. While it is still too early to say what went wrong, it is clear what did not go wrong. The GSLV MK2 rocket the biggest and heaviest in ISRO's present stable, which carried the payload, cruised just fine. This is crucial, because a GSLV MK2 rocket will be used to ferry the Chandrayaan-2 payload this year-end. Also, this was the sixth flight with the indigenously developed cryogenic stage. So, there is no fault in that department, either. This flight was also testing the indigenously developed, liquid-fueled, high-thrust Vika's engines, to give additional boost at takeoff. These are an improvement on previous Vika's engines, and are expected to be incorporated on all future GSLV MK2 flights. Though everyone is tight-lipped now, it does seem that the rocket, with all the added technological components, has passed the test. It is only the satellite that has gone rogue. Other space agencies, too, have had their share of misses though many go underreported. The most recent one was the African nation Angola's maiden space venture, Angusat-1, which was launched on December 26 last year from Baikonur in Kazakhstan, by Russia. Soon after launch, the satellite lost contact with its ground stations. The next day, however, scientists re-established contact with it, and on December 29, Roscosmos even announced that Angusat-1 was in good health. But, a few days later, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, detected that the satellite was drifting, and by mid-January, it had gone beyond its operational point in space. On January 15, Moscow-based RSC Enrahia said that the telemetry showed that the satellite had problems with the power supply system. But, by then, it had drifted beyond the range of ground control stations, so there was no way to do any troubleshooting. Even more curious is the case of another lost and found satellite, NASA's image. It was launched in 2000 to map the sphere of gases around the Earth. For five years, the satellite diligently did its work. In December 2005, it stopped sending images. NASA concluded that the power supply subsystems had failed and nearly forgot about image. NASA's images systems hanged, like it happens with mobile phones. And, just as with mobiles, you first have to drain the battery to reset the system, image, too, went through a battery draining phase. Then, the solar batteries recharged again, and the satellite arose from slumber. The game of peekaboo between satellite and ground center can stretch on for years. So though XOT 6A remains invisible for the present, who knows when the radars at Biolulu, Karnataka, might catch it.